तो हैलो गाइज सो फस्ट पार्ट अगर नहीं किया तो आई बटन उपर तुम लिंक देख सद सो so, उस भीडियो का लिंक तो मिल जाएगा फस्ट पार्ट जरा कि पहले ट्वेंटी क्वेश्चन का और इस तो बाद हमने ट्वेंटी क्वेश्चन का यह टैसट है जरा कि हम तुम स्टार्ट करोगे सो गाइज इस तरह की भीडियो में देखने चैनल सबसक्राइब कर लियो और इस भीडियो में एक लाइक कर दियो सो कि गाइज हूँ इस टैसट को स्टार्ट कर Now turn to section three. Section three. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hi Jeannie, how's it going? Oh, hello Dan. Pretty well, thanks. Have you managed to get the money for the course yet? Yes, that's all sorted out now, thanks. It took long enough though. It was practically a year ago that I applied to my local council for a grant, and it took them 6 months to turn me down. That's really slow. And I thought I was eligible for government funding, but it seems I was mistaken. So then I asked the boss of the company I used to work for if they would sponsor me, and much to my surprise, he said they'd make a contribution. But what about college grants and scholarships? There must be some you could apply for. Yes, there are, but they're all so small that I decided to leave them until I was desperate. Uh huh. And in fact, I didn't need to apply. My parents had been saying that as I already had a job, I ought to support myself through college. But in the end, they took pity on me, so now I've just about got enough. That's good. <laughs> so now I can put a bit of effort into meeting people. I haven't had time so far. Any suggestions? What about joining some college clubs? Oh right, you joined several, didn't you? Yes, I'm in the drama club. It's our first performance next week, so we're rehearsing frantically, <laughs> and I've got behind with my work, but it's worth it. I'm hoping to be in the spring production too.、Mm. I've never liked acting. Are you doing anything else? I enjoyed singing when I was at school, so I joined a group when I came to college. I don't think the conductor stretches us enough, though, so I'll give up after the next concert. And I also joined the debating society. It's fun. But with all the rehearsing I'm doing, something has to go, and I'm afraid that's the one. Do you do any sports? Yes, I'm in one of the hockey teams. I'm not very good, but I'd really miss it if I stopped. I decided to try tennis when I came to college, and I'm finding it pretty tough going. I'm simply not fit enough. <laughs> Nor me. I think I'll give that a miss. I'm hoping it'll help me to build up my stamina, but it'll probably be a long haul. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Thanks. How are you finding the course? I wish we had more seminars. What? I'd have thought we had more than enough already. All those people saying clever things that I could never think of. It's quite interesting, but I wonder if I'm clever enough to be doing this course. I find it helpful to listen to the other people. I like the way we're exploring the subject and working towards getting insight into it. How do you get on with your tutor? I don't think I'm on the same wavelength as mine, so I feel I'm not getting anything out of the tutorials. It would be more productive to read a book instead. Oh, mine's very demanding. She gives me lots of feedback and advice, so I've got much better at writing essays. And she's helping me plan my revision for the end of year exams.、Oh, do tell me, I always struggle with revision. Before you hear the rest of the discussion. You have some time to look at questions twenty-seven to thirty.
Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Now, a word about the development of curling clubs. Curling is thought to have been invented in medieval Scotland, and outdoor curling was very popular in Scotland between the 16th and 19th centuries, as the climates provided good ice conditions every winter. Kilsyth Curling Club is renowned as the first club in the world, having been formally constituted in 1716, and widely influencing ice curling development. In Kilsyth today, both men's and ladies sections are thriving, participating in all major competitions and having won championships in the British Open in the past. The mother club of curling, Grand Caledonian Curling Club, was instituted in 1838 for the purpose, not as such to attract people's interest, but to regulate the ancient Scottish game of curling by general laws. With these official rules, the young curlers could be trained in a more professional way. By 1842, the new national club had sought to obtain royal patronage, and it has ever since been known as the Royal Caledonian Curling Club. However, many sports, such as athletics and tennis, were frowned upon as being too recreational and not practical enough. So the Crown banned them by law during the 1300s, in the hope that men would instead practice the archery skills that were seen as vital to the country's defence and the ban was lifted in the 17th century. So, do you know the reason for curling being kept during the 16th century? Is it because it was so popular, or because people from all ages like children could play it? The spirit of curling dictates that one never cheers mistakes, misses, or gaffes by one's opponent, and most importantly, all the team members should strictly follow the instructions of their captain, which is essential for men in battle. Curling was brought to Canada from Scotland and some curling was played informally before 1800. Curlers often used iron curling stones made from melted materials such as cannonballs rather than granite until the early 1900s because there were transport problems importing granite stones from Scotland. That is the end of section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Section 4. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Postgraduates are about as easy to define as catching steam in a bucket. Courses can be vocational, for training, as research, as a preparation for research, or a combination of these. Also, you can choose between full-time and part-time. Increasingly, the approach to postgraduate study is becoming modular. The vast majority of postgraduates are doing short, taught courses, many of which provide specific vocational training. Indeed, there has been a 400% increase in postgraduate numbers in Britain over the past 20 years. Current figures stand at just under 400,000. People undertake postgraduate study for many reasons. These may be academic, intellectual challenge, development of knowledge, 
vocational, training for a specific career goal, or only vague, drifting into further study. It is essential that you determine the reasons you want to become a postgraduate. If you have clear goals and reasons for studying, this will enhance your learning experience and help you to remain focused and motivated throughout your course. Where you study should be based on much more than the course you want to do. For some courses, you are likely to be there for several years, and it is important that you are happy living there. Check also what type of accommodation is available and whether the institution provides any housing specifically for postgraduates. Choosing an institution and department is a difficult process. To determine quality, do not rely on the reputation of an institution, but find out what ratings are from the most recent assessment exercises. Find out about the staff, their reputation, competence, enthusiasm and friendliness. Visit the department if possible and talk to existing postgraduates about their experience, satisfaction, comments and complaints. Most importantly, check how they feel about their supervisors. Also, check what facilities are available, both at an institutional level, for example libraries, laboratory and computing facilities, and in the department, for example study room, desk, photocopying, secretarial support, etc. Everyone will have their own priorities here. I'm always anxious to check the computer support available and regard it as slightly more important than library access. Your working environment and the support available to you plays an essential part in making your work as a postgraduate a positive experience. Life as a postgraduate can be very different to your other experiences of education. Things that can distinguish your experience are the level of study, independence of working, intensity of the course, the demands on your time, and often the fact that you are older than the majority of the students. These factors can contribute to making you feel isolated. However, there are several ways you can make sure that this is either short-lived or does not happen at all. Many student unions have postgraduate societies that organize social events and may also provide representation for postgraduates to both the student union and the institution. Departments can also help to create a sense of identity and community and often have discussion groups available. Don't be afraid to talk to staff about any difficulties you might be having. Of course, universities provide counselling services, but we have found that the best advice comes from talking to other postgraduates who may have faced similar difficulties. Financial planning is essential, since the government excludes postgraduates from student loans and it can be difficult to maintain your student status with banks. This has implications for free banking and overdraft facilities. Do not underestimate your living costs, including food, accommodation and travel, and be careful not to budget for everything except a social life. Funding a course is one of the most challenging things people face when considering postgraduate study. Most postgraduate students are self-financing. They pay, often very large, fees and receive no maintenance income to support their study. Make sure you know exactly what your costs will be. Institutions often hide extra fees like laboratory costs behind the headline fee rate advertised. Funding can come from various sources. Research councils, charities, trust funds, institutional scholarships, local education authorities and professional bodies and organizations all offer various levels of funding. As I said before, the government excludes postgraduates from student loans, so it is essential you look to other sources. Career development loans are available from high street banks. The best advice on funding is to be proactive, persistent and patient. The postgraduate community in Britain is multinational, has a wide range of experience of life and work and an exciting mix of goals, both career and academic. Being a postgraduate student should be a productive and fulfilling thing to do and you will become part of a diverse and motivated social group. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.